Alright, welcome to June Gem 11. This is going to be about uh, collection variables and loops. And hopefully we'll get through enough content with uh, a short amount of time so we don't bore you with this. Okay, first of all, you see the new text workflow designer in front of you right now. What I'm going to do is create a couple of variables. The first one, first one being a collection variable. Alright, now I like I said, I usually give it a, a prefix, C-O-L-L, -L, so I know it's a collection, or num if it's a number, etc. So I'm just going to call it, call it data, such so a collection of data. Now, for those who don't understand what a collection is, it's just a, a list of data. It can be uh, numbers, it can be text, it can be dates. Uh, it's just basically a list or an array of, of data that you keep in memory. All right. Done. Now, I'm going to do this with numbers, so let's keep this easy we'll create also a number variable called num data I'm going to create another one while I'm in here and I'm just going to call it num index all right now there are a number of ways you can actually populate a collection variable uh, it could be based on a querying a particular list uh, you know, a regular expression uh, you know, querying some XML. There's a bunch of ways to do it. I'm going to use a regular expression because I find it uh, is the easiest way. So let's do something like this. We'll add an action set and I'm just going to use the action set just to hide some logic. And I'll add a, a regular expression action and I'm going to add some numbers. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oops, semicolon. All right, let's just double check that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so we have ten numbers there. I'm going to do a split, and I'm going to do a split. Oops, I put it in the wrong place. Right there, I'm going to do a split based on semicolons. So each number is going to get separated out, and I'm going to store it in a collection variable called collection data. All right, I can actually test this out just to see that this works. So you should get actually exactly the same thing in the output. Yep, perfect, right? Because when you display a collection, it always displays it in uh, semicolon delimited form. So uh, that's a quick test. Okay, that works. Now, let's minimize that so we don't see that. So we're just gonna assume we created some, uh, we have some collection of data. Now, let's do a couple of different things. Let's do a, Let's do a for each first. A for each action lets you iterate through a collection variable. And each within each iteration, it's going to run some logic. So here's our for each action. Our target collection is that collection of data. I want to store the result in num data. And you know what? I also want to store the index. It just tells me the position of where we're at. Okay. And we'll just ignore the stop processing for now. And then finally, let's do a quick uh, log action and log that in there. So I'm going to say index followed by a dot and let's just a few spaces, num data. All right. Now this should iterate through each of those values and log that to the history. So we'll just do collection loops. All right, let's have a look at what happens when we manually run this workflow. All right, so let's go back to our list and we'll start this workflow and hopefully get all those uh, values from that collection. And we'll start this. Again, shouldn't be a very long running workflow. It's just only 10 items in there, so it should be fairly quick. Okay, there it is. And there you go, position zero, position one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and all those numbers. So there's a really easy way to go through and iterate through a particular collection. Okay, now let's disable this and see how we would do this with a loop action. Okay, there's our loop. Drag that on there. Now the thing is, there's nothing inside a loop that will say, just go through each of the values in a collection. So you'll need to figure out how many items are in there. So let's use an action called a collection operation. We'll do that before the loop. 
and we'll select the target collection, which is our collection of data. See, there's a number of different things you can do with this. You can add values, you can remove, you can do a count, which is what we want to do. You can get a particular value, which we'll be using in a moment. Check if a value exists, sort it, pop it, join, uh, remove duplicates, which is also a popular one. Now, store result in, so let's create another variable called num count. And what's a number? All right. Now we're going to store the count, right? Which is basically how many items are in this collection in num count. Done. All right. Go back to the loop action now. So now what we're going to do is check. We'll do a comparison. We'll say continue looping while the index is less than the number, the count. Right, so keep. We're going to keep looking at the num index, and we're going to make sure keep doing this loop until we get to num count. Now the thing is, we need to therefore increment that uh, that index. So we'll do a math operation, and this one is going to be just a simple one. We're going to take the index. We're going to do a plus value of one. And store it back into the index. So we're just going to increment that index value. Okay, so we should get one, two, three, four, or sorry, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, done. Now, before the math operation, we need another collection operation to pull that data out at that particular index. So again, call data, which is our data, we want to do a get. Notice the parameters change, index. That's the index we want, and we still want to store the result in num data. Right, perfect. Now what I want to do, let's actually go up a little bit. Let's expand this again, and all we'll do is do a copy, and we'll paste it into here. So let's go back and just go through and figure out what is this actually doing. We're going to loop for all the number of items in this collection. For each of those, we're going to pull that data out using a collection operation and do a get. We're going to log that to the workflow history, and then we're going to increment the index. So the next time around, we'll get the next value. All right, done. Let's publish this and see if this runs and runs successfully. Okay, we've got the workflow. Let's come back to our test list. I'll create a quick item here and just make sure that it runs. Let's just do test five. And let's run the latest and greatest workflow. This should be using a loop instead of a for each. Notice that we see no uh, for each action in here. So it's just going to do the loop. And assuming that everything is working fine, it should run pretty quickly. Done. There we go. 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 8, 9, and all the numbers in the collection. So there's two ways to iterate through a, um, a collection variable. Right. I mean, I definitely think that the for each is easier. Right. Um, I really don't see right now why you would need this, but I have uh, found situations where, of course, you know, you do need to do this sort of functionality. One thing I do want to point out as to the difference between the for each and the loop, there is something called safe looping inside Intex workflow, and what that does is it prevents you, or at least. Uh, helps or mitigates a particular issue, which is building an infinite loop. Now, if you look at this particular loop action, we're going to loop while index is less than num count. If I was to disable this action, num index would be zero, num count I think is 10, and because we don't, we don't increment that uh, index anymore because that's disabled, it would get stuck in this loop forever. And potentially that would uh, you know, cause issues with your server because it's going to use up as much CPU as possible. So uh, for those of you out there, uh, state looping is something that you should definitely keep on in a production environment, but just know that what it does do doesn't prevent you from building this type of infinite loop, but through each iteration of this loop, it puts in anywhere from a one to a five minute delay. So through each of these uh, iterations. Now, if it's a behind the scenes thing and you only have a few items to process, it's probably not going to be very noticeable. But if you are... Uh, if you have a thousand items to process, it's going to be very noticeable. Or if you are building it in a dev environment, it'll also be very noticeable because you'll be you'll be actually um, looking at this more closely 
and the waiting is going to be really painful. Okay, so hopefully this helps you with an idea of what a collection variable is, how to iterate it through it, or how to iterate through it with either a for each or a loop. I did mention the safe looping that affects loops. It does not affect for each actions because for each have a finite number of values that it goes through. It cannot go into an infinite loop. So just be aware of that. Um, if you do find the safe looping uh, is an issue for you, if you know how many items you have in a collection, uh, you could potentially be pretty smart and build uh, a collection. Or sorry, uh, you know how many times you need to go through a particular loop. You could actually be pretty smart and build a collection with that many number of uh, values in it, and they could be just all dummy values, and just use a for each to go through, but then you'll know it's gone through exactly that many number of times. So uh, something to think about for the future. Okay, hope this is uh, helpful and uh, look forward to another June gem tomorrow.